to, I went from home, from home, like home with my wife and kids, to court, because I was out on bond, went to court, sentenced, instantly the handcuffs are thrown on you, right? And you're handcuffed to a group of 12 other men, right? And then you're wheeled off to the jail. Prison, um, you instantly learn, and it is instantly made known who you are. You are a convict. You are an inmate. Your rights are terminated, right? One thing about prison is that there is not a true rule book going into prison. There isn't a handout that says to you, um, this, is, this is how you're to behave, et cetera, et cetera. But most of the rules that are in prison are the unwritten rules, right? That you have to learn how do you act, how do you behave, who do you talk to, um, how do you stand, where do you go. Um, I was sent to uh, what they call a reception center. It's a very, um, it's, a, uh, it's an odd term. You'd think it was kind of a soft term for a reception uh, center, but it, it's not. It's prison. And it's prison with uh, bars that are catwalks, um, six stories of cells in a, in a block, right? You're in your prison cell for 23 and a half hours a day uh, while you're processed through. And that took about a month and a half or so. And everybody's kind of pooled together that comes in. And then from there, you're, um, you're classified and sent out. I was sent out to a prison um, in the Upper Peninsula and, um, you know, shackled in a bus with busload of other prisoners stopping at all the prisons along the way right and they dropped me off in the upper peninsula in the middle of winter went from no snow to lots of snow <laughs> right that was literally over my head and uh, I was put into prison there it was all new to me I was rather in shock very worried about my family how are they could be taken care of I was put in the prison and it was not, there weren't cells there per se, it was more um, communal living, uh, but very much a prison. And uh, very, it was put in a prison that actually had twice the number of prisoners in it that it was designed for. So you can just imagine we were on top of each other. And uh, when you're on top of each other day in, day out, um, it can be quite difficult. In fact, it can get violent at times. Some of the violence, the, uh, the, the guards never see, the officers never see. They steal from each other, hit each other over the head with a, uh, like a pool ball and a, and a sock and whack somebody with it. Uh, you know, being a new Christian walking into, uh, into a prison, you know, as, as a new Christian, and, and, and I say as a new Christian, I, I, I didn't even know what that meant, quite frankly, right? I was still learning who, who, is, who this Jesus is, right? Who did I give my life to follow? Um, what does it mean to walk as a Christian? One thing I did know is that before I went in, I vowed I would not come home the same man that I went in as. And I was very diligent about that. And I've since have met many men in prison that have made the same vow. They say, I cannot go home the same man that I came in as. The challenge for us as a, as a community, as a society, is what do we do with the prisoners once they go inside? There are limited programs, um, especially in the UP. I mean, there's just not a lot of volunteers that come in and, um, you know, and so when we, you hear the term warehousing prisoners, um, yeah, we're doing it. There was nothing for me to make myself better that the state was gonna put on except for a few groups that I needed to go to. I had to learn how to jail first. I didn't know how to jail, right? Um, there are ways to jail that are healthy. There are ways to jail that are unhealthy, right? There are some men that can sleep, literally sleep 20 hours a day, right? I, it's, it's an art that they figure out how to do. Um, but there are others that say, you know what? Mm -mm. I am gonna, I'm gonna make the best of every day. When I came to prison, I was fortunate enough that uh, a group of uh, individuals um, surrounded me, 
they actually sought me, uh, being the new guy, and they were uh, at the Christian group, and they became deep friends um, to me, and they helped me learn how to jail healthy. They helped me grow as a Christian because they were further ahead in me than I was. Also did things like um, Crossroads program. Um, I did the full two years, which is which was a great thing. I mean, that was a great constant in my life for those two years um, because I was still learning the Bible at that point. I still am now, but I mean, I was really learning the Bible then. I didn't understand it well and some of the concepts behind it. When you're corresponding with somebody, um, <clears throat> what was helpful for me was encouragement because I, grew, I basically grew up without a father as well. You need to encourage them need to speak truth, um, never talk to them about their crime, um, <clears throat> because that'll shut your door immediately. But challenge them. Uh, we like to be challenged. When I go into the prison um, with our volunteers, when we as a church go into the prison, the prisoners, once you start building that trust with them, they, they like to be challenged. They like their thinking to be challenged, right? And you can do that in, in a not disrespectful way, in a healthy way. You just say, did you think about, when you're looking at their Bible lessons, did you think about, throw more of those, in, as many as those that you can into them. Did you think about, without giving them the answer sometimes, so that they can say, I didn't think about that. The many inmates don't get a lot of mail, right? And so what I would see the inmates doing is that they would, they would go through, they would hang on to everything, right? Anything that was written to them. And so I can, so for the volunteers, you can bet that they are re-looking at what is written to them multiple times, right? And so if you're sending them a challenge, they're looking at it, they're reading it, at least reading it multiple times. I kept some of my letters for years. They just kept them. They were kind of like a source of comfort for me. Right? Um, because I, in, every day we're interacting with other inmates, right? Some of those inmates don't have your best need in mind, right? I mean, so you're, um, you're kind of li you're living, I'm not kind of, you are living in basically a very unhealthy environment. And so when you get something positive that comes towards you, um, you latch on to that. And that's why it's up to us, our volunteers and, and crossroads, to <clears throat> try to breathe into the inmate to say, no, you are part of our community. We care for you, right? Never touching the so you can never justify what brought them to prison, right? Our goal is to say, no, you are a man, right? And this is how we walk as men, right? And to help them move them from here to there. But at the same time, the benefit of doing that is they too are helping you move from here to there. Because once we, you and I realize that we too are broken people, right? And sitting in front of me is a broken man, right? And we're really no different, right? that we are two broken people trying to f figure out life. How do we behave? How do we do the next right thing, right? How do we grow the kingdom where we're at in life together?